Welcome to the live broadcast of something important. <laughs> we are going to we have gathered here today to get our flesh ripped off in the glory. If you don't know what to do, first thing you need to do is ask God to kill you, and then uh, he's going to rip your flesh off. You'll put it to death in Christ and let the Spirit of God rise up inside. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. I'm going to fool around with the effects. I want to look smooth. Look at that baby skin. <laughs> Anyways, I'm here all by myself. I'm a loner. I'm a loner. Whoa. Welcome to the live broadcast of something important. <laughs> we are going to... We have gathered here today. Wow. That was really, really rude of that guy to interrupt us. Anyway, so I got smooth skin on. Bright. Oh, there we go. There we go. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh, we got all these. All right, I guess I should tell you guys some important stories since we're live. When I was a baby boy, I French kissed a dog. <laughs> okay. You know what? I actually know. Really, this is a true story. I French kissed a dog. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I had another. It wasn't my dog, but this dog was named Rebel. And this dog lived in a bus. Ah, hate lice. <laughs> and uh, he used to protect me, man. He would like, uh, like I was like four or five years old, and little kids would beat me up and stuff, and well, pick on me. So I took this dog Rebel out, and I go, Rebel, sick him. And he would just jump up, put his arms on the kid's shoulders, and rough, and the kid would go screaming, crying, and it just brought me so much exhilaration. The weapons of our warfare were carnal back then. <laughs> but that dog did save my life because I went and let's get me downloading up. Good. Okay, download it. Good. 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 I, I went into a fence and this dog, uh, well, I saw a bull charging towards me and this dog jumped up and grabbed that bull's tail and it's hanging on and uh, freaked the bull around. He's spinning around. It gave me time to get out of that uh, that area. It was in Cochrane. Uh, this is Saskatchewan, BC. I don't know. It's a little kid, man. <laughs> Canada somewhere. And, uh, I remember that dog rebel saved my life and I ended up hiding in a silo until he came and found me and then I went home and stuff and you know what are you doing let your five-year-old kid run around <laughs> anyway well it's because I was pesky and I wasn't held in you know wasn't too many limits back then and stuff of what you could do because you're living on the country but we uh boom 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 well it's three 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 right now and so uh yeah Dogs are sometimes a lot more powerful than a lot of the preachers that we hear today. <laughs> True that. Because that dog risked his life. Late, he risked his life to fight this big beast to save me. Whereas most preachers, they just want you to feed them and give them money and get them all fat. <laughs> the things of the flesh. And they won't risk their life for you. Well, they lay down their life for you. They think laying down their life for you is getting a sermon for you every week so that you can give them an offering and keep their little ministry running. Well, that's not how the kingdom of heaven works. 
kingdom of heaven works you give you lay yourself you lay your life down to feed the sheep you know you don't live like a devil during the week and uh you just gotta you pay you pay the price to spend time you pay the price of sacrificing and then you receive from heaven and you give that daily bread you give that manna not just once a week but every day to your family to your uh to those around you facebook whatever man uh, that dog taught me that it's like it's almost like a lesson of david uh david laid down his life you know he risked his life to save a poopy sheep he risked his life to save uh you know he saved it from the mouth of the bear uh the lion or whatever i asked god what's what's the kingly anointing god what is this kingly anointing what is this to rule over people and uh god simply just told me no it's to lay your down lay your life down even risking it unto death so that you can serve those people and that they can bring them into life which is life more abundantly which is god bring them into god and uh that's that's what the that's what the gospel is is just bringing the good news but not just you know packaging it and prostituting it and selling it to people you bring the good news that you've re freely received you freely give you share your revelation you share your testimony of jesus and then it comes forth and manifests into their life and it becomes a testimony that they receive because they receive christ too and then they have a testimony of Jesus that where they can share their experiences with other people. And then those people receive the testimony of Jesus. It's just sharing life, sharing your talents, you're not burying it. You're not hiding it in the ground. It's already hidden in your ground, but you got to let it out. You know, Jesus was pretty upset with the guy who buried it, buried his talent. You know he wants he wants to he wants everything that's valuable to come out you know and there's also the thing you know don't cast your pearls before swine you know what you take to swine you take an iron scepter and you just <laughs> yeah and then you run them off into the river until they die you know the river of life will put to death the deeds of the flesh so get them to the river you got to get them to the river <laughs> and then they will uh they will experience life. I have no idea. I'm just talking to myself. I have no viewers, man. What the heck, man? We all start somewhere. These are the days of large beginnings with small viewers. That's okay. God bless you. Peace.